What is going on YouTube? Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMP, IA, and Part 147 instructor, back with another video. And this time I'm gonna be talking about 100 hour inspections, when are they due, when do you have to comply with them, um, what does the reg say, all that kind of stuff. Kind of clearing up for some people when you have to do a 100 hour inspection or when you're required to do 100 hour inspections, when you're not and all that. Um, so if that interests you, as always, you know, stick around. So I don't wanna waste your time, I'd like to get right into it, but behind me is the Cessna 172 that I rebuilt on the channel a couple years ago and have been doing the maintenance on ever since, and it is used for a flight school, which leads me to what is a 100 hour inspection. And well, technically by regulation, the 100 hour inspection and an annual inspection are the same in scope and detail. The only difference is an AMP can do a 100 hour inspection, but you have to have an IA, which I do, to do an annual inspection. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. So if you were doing a 100 hour inspection on your aircraft and you were an IA, which I am, I could sign this off as an annual if I wanted to. However, I'm I'm not going to. I'm going to sign it off as a 100 hour because it's going to reach its an annual before it's due, right? So 100 hours are required whenever the aircraft is used little post editorial note here as I'm driving away to meet my absolute smoke show of a wife for lunch. Um, I said that an AMP can do a 100 hour and you have to be an IA to do an annual and there seems to be a common misconception. This is not a maintenance video, but there seems to be a common misconception that if an AMP does a 100 hour, an IA can come right behind them and just sign that 100 hour off as an annual. And that's a myth. That's not true. If you have a 100 hour inspection done by an AMP and you're thinking that an, I, I, an IA is just gonna come sign it off as an annual, it's not gonna happen because an IA can not delegate the inspection, nor can an AMP doing a 100 hour delegate the inspection and then sign it off or have it signed off by someone else. So you can't do that. An IA has to sign it off as an annual, has to do an annual or has to do the inspection. So I thought I might mention that for hire. I'm gonna paraphrase the reg here, but what the reg says, and maybe I'll put a picture up, it, up of it, what the reg says is that no aircraft shall be operated for hire unless within the previous 100 hours it has had an annual or 100 hour inspection that complies with the scope and detail of 43 appendix D in so many words, right? And that might not be an exact wording of it, but that tells me that if the airplane is used for hire, I have to have 100 hour. So first question, what is for hire? Well, flight schools are pretty obvious. If you are renting the airplane out, if the airplane is making revenue being rented out, it is being used for hire, especially if you're training students in it, it's being used for hire. If you are chartering people in the aircraft, and we're not gonna get into 135, one, or any of that kind of stuff, or like charter operations, I'm just speaking generally here. But if you're using the airplane for charter, that means you are flying people and you are charging them money to take them to their destination, that is for hire. If you are taking skydivers up in it and the skydivers are jumping out, that is for hire. And all of these things require a 100 hour inspection. Now, I am not here to give you advice on how to skirt 100 hour inspections or how to get around doing 100 hour inspections. And that is certainly not what this video is. But I will say there are some ways that people do find their way around this. And one of them is, Another post editorial note here is I realize there are ways around a 100 hour inspection. And obviously I said flying clubs, things like that. If you fly your friends somewhere and they just give you money for gas, I know none of those things are for hire. I'm not going to get into a debate of what is for hire, what is not for hire, and the finite details of the regs. Um, this is just merely to say that when 100 hours are due and clarify the recurrent basis on them. The airplane is owned by a flying club. Like a flying club owns the airplane and people who subscribe to that flying club pay an hourly rate to a kitty fund to use the airplane. That is not technically for hire because it is a club that is using the airplane and it's not being rented to the general public. You have to be a member of that club. And the list goes on and on and on and on, but the, the key to this is for hire. So if the airplane is being used to generate revenue, it's being used for hire and it has to have a 100 hour inspection. Now, what is a 100 hour inspection or when are they due? Well, they are due each 100 hours. So when we first put this airplane into the flight school or started using it for student training, I did an annual inspection on it because it had been fully rebuilt and had all this work done to it. So I did an annual inspection on it and we started doing 100 hours at that annual inspection mark. So to keep everything straight and simple and easy for the sake of a video, if I did that inspection at a thousand hours total airframe time, the next 100 hour inspection is due at 1,100 hours and be, can be overflown by a period of up to 10 hours only, only 
for the purpose of getting it to a maintenance facility. For example, we flew 100 hours, we were at 1,098 hours, or, yeah, 1,098 hours, and for some odd reason, the maintenance here on field was all out on vacation, but I needed a 100 hour inspection on it. I could fly it up to however many, that'd be 100, 1,110 hours to get to a maintenance facility, but you cannot use that 10 hours for revenue flights. It's only to get it back to a maintenance facility. And technically, if you're at 1,999.5, so you've only got 30 minutes before the 100 hours due, you're not supposed to take off on a revenue flight with only 30 minutes left and then train into the 10 hours either. So don't be doing that. Again, this is, a, this is gonna be an opinion of the FISDO, but that's besides the point. The point of this is to say that 10 hours is only for the purpose of getting it to a maintenance facility. Now. If you do overfly it, let's say you take the airplane out of town, you're doing a bunch of flight training out of town, you realize you're really close to the 100 hour inspection or you're there, you're at 1,100 hours, and you're like, dang, I have to fly all the way back across the United States to get this airplane home and I'm gonna put about six hours on it in, in doing that, okay? So it's 1,106 hours. The next 100 hour is still due at 1,200 hours. You don't get to tack that six hours on to the next 100 hour inspection. So when I did the first annual on this at 1,000 hours, which is not what it was, it's a weird number. Um, the 100 hour inspections are new, now due at 1,000, 1,100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and so on and so forth. I can always do them early, but I can never do them late. If I do it early, I can move the time frame up, but I can't move the time frame back, if that makes sense. So, 100 hour inspections. I hope that kind of cleared some of that up, and I did mention a couple of times that this is gonna be the opinion of the FISDO, and why I said that is, if you are operating a flight school, or if you're operating a skydiving operation, if you're a CFI using your own personal airplane, whatever it may be, or you're just thinking about renting your airplane out, who is ultimately going to show up and in, do a ramp check slash an inspection of you is a FISDO or an airworthiness inspector from your local FISDO. So what the FISDO requires in my area, which is San Antonio, Texas, is not the same as what the FISDO is gonna wanna see in Dallas or California or New York. It's going to vary because there is some gray area in the regulations. So if you're not sure, my advice to you would be to go ahead and call the FISDO, ask to speak to an airworthiness inspector and ask the question, this is what I'm wanting to do with my airplane. Am I gonna need to do 100 hour inspections for it? And if the answer is yes, well now you know, just go ahead and do your 100 hour inspections for it. But there you go. I hope that cleared things up. I kinda wanted to make a short video. It's been a little while since I've uploaded. I was out here at the airport doing 100 hour on the airplane behind me anyways. So I thought I'd make a quick video on it. I haven't been feeling very well lately and I've been on a vacation and a lot of stuff has been going on. So I've missed a couple uploads, but school starts back on Monday and it will be back to my regular series on oral and practical projects uh, for AMP mechanics looking to go test to get their AMP. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.